I'm Dave from Montana Fish, Wildlife and Parks. Welcome to the six minute fish dissection. Our plan is actually to work on one of these fish dissections for a few minutes, five or six minutes each day, and we hope that you'll follow along. If you miss one of them, don't worry, you can come back and you can watch them all later on. Normally we do a fish dissection like this, a whole class, with about 6,000 kids in Montana schools each year. A lot of them this year though have not been able to do their dissection. So this may not be as much fun as working on your very own fish in your very own classroom. We hope that you'll still be able to learn something with us each day. Although there's more than 30,000 different types of fish in the whole world, in Montana we have only 91 different species. The fish that we're going to work on in this dissection is one of those 91 fish. Most of the fish have a lot of the same body parts, so what we learn with our Montana fish applies to all the other fish in Montana and most of the other fish around the world. So to get started, a few vocabulary words always, here's your big word of the day, and this is the word that describes what we call the scientific study of fish. You ready for this? The word is ichthyology. Ichthyology, say it with me, ichthyology. How's that for a big word? You don't have to remember it, we're not gonna be giving you a test at the end of all this, but still, ichthyology sounds pretty impressive, doesn't it? Go to mom and say, hey mom, guess what? We did some ichthyology today. Sounds cool. All right, let's, uh, let's get going. Let's check out our fish. The fish we're using is called a yellow perch. A lot of people just call them perch for short. They're not the biggest fish in Montana by far, but they're very common and lots of people like to fish for perch. In fact, so many people fish for them that they are the most popular fish in Montana during the winter months, during the ice fishing time. More people fish for perch than anything else. We don't consider perch to be native to Montana. That means they were brought here by humans sometimes in the past. The perch we're using today for our dissection were caught by kids from Montana schools just a few months ago while they were out ice fishing with their classes. So let's check them out. This perch is not especially big, not especially small either. It's kind of a medium sized perch. Like we said, they really don't get very big. If we measure this perch, put the ruler on the perch, we see this one measures, it looks like, just a little bit over nine inches long. Uh, a really big perch is something 10, 11 inches long. A really giant perch is more like 12 inches long. In fact, the biggest perch that anybody ever caught in Montana was from Lower Stillwater Lake, and that was in 2006, and that perch was over 14 inches long. So that gives you an idea on the size of a perch. When we start a dissection, we usually start with the external or the outside body parts. So let's get a look at some of the outside parts on this fish. If you look at the shape, they're, they're long, they're thin, they're streamlined, um, makes it easy for them to glide through the water. Perch are really, really good swimmers, like all fish are. Um, when they swim, how do you think they actually move their body? It's with fins, right? All fish have fins, and the tail right here, or the caudal fin, is probably the biggest on the perch and certainly the most important, it's really like the motor. This is the fin that propels the fish through the water. The other fins <clears throat> on the bottom and the side, there's an anal fin back here. There are two pelvic fins down here on the bottom and two pectoral fins, one fin on each side. These actually are the little fins that can help a perch swim backwards. All three of these fins are all, actually five of these fins, are there to help the perch swim and steer in the water. Remember the caudal fin or the tail moves it through the water. On the back of the perch, there's two dorsal fins. If you stand them up here, one of them, the front, the big dorsal fin, has these sharp spikes in it. You may be able to see them, you may be able to hear them with my finger hitting them. Um, they're sharp, the perch can stand up that fin when it gets scared or nervous, and it's something that would help to protect it a little bit from predators. Final thing to look at is the color of the fish. They're really colorful, and you might think, well, this is not very good camouflage if you want to protect yourself from predators, but really it is. If you look at the fish, they're dark on the back, and most fish will be that way. They're dark on top, so if a predator is looking down on the fish, like a bird from up above, the dark back of the fish is going to blend in with the dark bottom of the lake. If you flip the fish over, the belly is nice and light, white or light colored. That's so if there's a predator underneath looking up at the perch, it blends in kind of with the sky. And then on the side, perch are kind of neat. They've got these cool uh, vertical stripes on their side, and they're there to help the perch uh, hide among the plants and sticks and other things underwater. That's all we have time to look at today. Come back tomorrow. We're going to learn even more about our perch. See you then.
Welcome back, ichthyologists. Yesterday in our dissection, we learned some facts about the perch. We learned how they swim. We learned how their special colors help uh, camouflage their bodies and help them to hide. Ichthyology was the big word we learned, and it means the study of fish. Today, we're going to use a different science word. We're still going to be doing ichthyology, but we're going to do we're going to use a word that describes when we study body parts of an animal. That word is anatomy. So we're still going to be doing ichthyology, we're still going to be studying fish, we're going to be focusing on the anatomy or the body parts of those fish. Today especially we're going to spend our time looking at some of the external or the outside features of the perch, starting with the head. So here's our fish, and we'll start with some of those easy body parts on the head to begin with. Okay, here's our fish. We're going to start with some of those easy external body parts. Perch have a nose, or at least some nose openings, just like people do. Um, if you can look closely, they're a little hard to see, but there's two nose openings on each side of the fish's head. There's two over here, two over here. There's one is right there and one is right next to it, so there's sort of a little tube connecting the two of those little openings. If we look at the body of the perch, fish, most fish anyway, are covered with scales. All of these tiny little scales, there, 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 they're all over. Um, Underneath the scales is a layer of skin. That's where the color of the fish is that we already talked about. And each of these scales, although they're fairly smooth, it's kind of like a tiny little armor plate. They're there to protect the fish. On top of the scales, so there's a layer of skin, there's a layer of scales. On covering the scales, there's a layer of slime. And you really can't see it, but you know it when you touch a fish. The slime is there to protect the perch or the fish from germs in the water, and it smooths out their body, makes them even more slippery as they're able to swim or to try and get away from predators. If we're looking for ears on the perch, you really don't see any ears. There are no big external ears like a human has or a dog or a cat, but perch are still able to detect sounds underwater really well. So instead of the two big ears on the side of their head like we have, perch really have hundreds of small ears down the sides of their body. And although I call it an ear, it's not really an ear, it's just a tiny hole in a scale, and it works the same way as an ear does. And the way it works is sound waves go into those little holes, and inside the holes there are nerves, and the fish uses those nerves to detect the sound. They're not easy to see, but there's a whole entire row of those scales. They run all the way down the side of the fish. So really, instead of just two, they have each one of these little dots is a single individual ear hole on the fish might be a hundred on each side. So a hundred over here, a hundred on the other side of the fish, two hundred little holes. We call those special scales a lateral line. And a lateral line takes the place of ears on a fish. So it shows us really fish do hear sounds, so maybe that's why people whisper when they go fishing, right? Last thing we want to check out is the mouth of the perch. To start with, do you see any teeth? We pry this open and look inside. I don't see any teeth, but I do see a tongue in there. And their tongue is different from the tongue of a mammal. It's made of cartilage, it's not muscular, uh, but they do have a tongue. And we said, already said there's no teeth. We don't see any big, flat, grinding molars like a human or a horse or a cow has. We certainly don't see any teeth in there like the sharp, cutting teeth on a shark. But if you feel in there, you just take my word for it, there are all these little, tiny, sharp, um, rough teeth that are in there. And they're specially adapted to grab onto the things that a perch wants to eat. So exactly what, what do you think a perch eats anyway? They, they really, they eat lots of different things. Um, bugs or crawdads, pretty much anything alive that crawls or swims underwater, that's small enough for them to eat. And they can get their mouth open pretty wide to grab things. They especially love to eat other fish, maybe even other perch. So they need these rough little teeth that are in here to grab onto their prey and hang on. Then they swallow it whole. No chewing, they're not like you and me. So your mom probably would not be very happy if you were going to eat like a perch. That's it for now. Uh, come back next time. We'll do more ichthyology and anatomy. See you then. Welcome back to our dissection. Time for more perch anatomy and more perch ichthyology. So far, our dissection has just been looking at the external parts of the perch. Today, we're going to start transitioning a little bit, and we're going to start looking at some of the internal or inside parts, sort of. The first part we're going to look at is something that all fish have, but no human does. What do you think that could be? Here's a hint. The part I'm talking about takes oxygen out of the water, 
transfers it into the blood of the perch so the fish can stay alive. At the same time, it also gets rid of the carbon dioxide out of the fish's blood. It really kind of works like a never-ending exchange uh, with oxygen going into the fish's body, carbon dioxide coming out of the fish's body. Did you figure it out yet? The part we're going to look at today is called a gill. And humans, of course, don't have gills. Instead, we have lungs, but our lungs do exactly the same things for us that the gills do for a fish. They let the body, they let the oxygen come into our body and they let the carbon dioxide out of our body. So whether it's a gill or a lung, both of those are very delicate. To protect the delicate lungs inside of us, we have bones called ribs that surround our lungs, kind of like a cage. Perch or fish usually have a hard, bony covering. Their gills are down here underneath. They have this hard, bony flap called the operculum. Think of that word, the operculum, that protects their delicate gills, and they're found underneath that operculum. Do the same thing. They're, it's hard, it's bony, protects those gills underneath. To get to the gills, for us to, to take out a gill and find the parts, we have to get rid of this operculum. So I'm going to use a tweezers and a scissors. I'm going to hold that up, and I'm going to cut my way. You can kind of hear that sort of crunching as we go, because what's an operculum made of? It's made of bone, right? So we'll cut our way through that operculum, get rid of it, and expose the gills underneath. And when we do that, you're going to see the gills are down there. And they're red, and these have been washed a little bit, so they're kind of pink. Why do you think they'd be red? What could possibly be inside of a gill that would make them red? The answer to that, of course, is blood. Blood flows through the gills, picks up the oxygen dissolved in the water, and carries it out into the body of the fish. So the parts of the gills, when we actually look at them, you can see there's four gills in here. We have to take a gill out. We're going to do that quickly, and then we'll try and identify some of those parts. So if I hold just one gill with my tweezers, cut it down here, cut the other end. I've got this gill out. We're going to take the gill, clean it off, and make sure that we can find the three most important parts that actually make up the gill of the fish. So if we look at them, the way this gill was arranged in the fish, these short little spiky teeth were facing towards the front. They kind of look like the teeth on a rake, like you might rake your grass with. And they actually have a good name for that. We call them gill rakes. And the gill rakes are there to keep things that are in the water from getting in and damaging the rest of the gills or kind of to clog them up. In the center of the gill, there's this short little, um, this little piece that's kind of shaped like an arch where everything is attached to. That one has a good name too. It's called a gill arch. Finally, some things that make sense. And if you look at the rest of the gill, kind of a lot of people think, wow, that looks sort of like an eyelash. There are all these little tubes that stick out off the back of the gill that would be red. They're little, uh, they're fibery things, so we call them gill fibers, and they are full of blood, and that's where the oxygen that's dissolved in the water transfers into the fish's blood, and the carbon dioxide comes out of the fish's blood. So they kind of look like an eyelash. We call them gill fibers, a gill arch in the middle, and gill rakes on the front. And of course, covering up that whole thing, that bony flap that we cut off is called the operculum. So those are the four parts of the gill. Uh, that's all we have time for today. Next time we're going to learn how the fish's eyes work. So see you then. Time for more dissecting. Today we're going to go even deeper into the internal anatomy of a perch. It's time to study the eyes of our fish. For most of the kids in classrooms, when they do their dissection, the eyes are usually one of the coolest parts. When they're all done, they go, Man, those eyes were cool. But the problem with eyes, especially on a perch, they're pretty small, they're pretty hard to see. The idea, the way the eyes work though, they work the same basic way that our eyes work, so we need to try and figure that out before we actually look at the eyes. Of course, the one big difference between the eyes of a fish and the eyes that you and I have is that there are no eyelids anywhere on that fish. So here's your, your good tip for the day, no matter what, don't ever try and get yourself into a staring contest with one of these perch. I guarantee you're going to blink way before they ever do, and you will lose. So now we've covered the big important fact. Um, let's look at a few more parts inside the eye of our perch. 
In order for the fish's eye to work, it needs light. The light has to get into the inside of the eye, so there's almost a hole in the fish's eye. It's not really a hole. It's kind of like the, uh, the little window in a room that would let the light come in. This clear spot in the center of the fish's eye is called a pupil. When the light goes into the fish's eye, passes through the pupil into the eye, there's like a little uh, clear ball inside of there. It looks like a little marble. It's called a lens and the lens focuses the light inside the eye just like the lens on a telescope would do and then it allows the light to shine onto the back of the fish's eyeball. Way back there, deep inside the eyeball, is a layer of cells called a retina and the retina works almost like a solar panel on the fish. When the light hits the retina, it turn, the retina turns the light into electricity and then it has that electricity and it has to send it somewhere the electricity gets sent off to the fish's brain a very short distance, the brain is right here, on a nerve. And the, uh, the special nerve that carries the electricity from the eye to the brain is called the optic nerve. So we're going to try and get an eyeball out of our fish, find as many of those parts as we can, and see if we can explain it. So we're going to flip our fish and try and get an eyeball out and try and find the parts. And the eyeball is held inside of the eye socket by all kinds of muscles. Um, kind of hard to get out, so we'll try and get underneath there grab the eyeball from underneath, pull it out, and we'll see if we're lucky, we'll get a nice optic nerve to come along. There's the, you kind of see it hanging down there on the bottom. We have the eyeball out with the nerve coming off of there. And what we want to do is to try and get the lens out from inside. So here we have a nice fish eye. I'm going to try and grab it with the tweezers. There's lots of uh, liquid inside of the eye that the lens kind of floats inside of. So we'll cut through there cut that into two pieces and we will see if we can get that fish's lens to pop right out. Remember we said the lens kind of, there it is, it kind of looks like a little BB or a little marble. It's clear. The light shines through there. Here's our fish lens. You see how uh, cool that looks. We'll try and clean it off a little bit. And that is the fish's lens similar to what um, all other eyeballs have inside of them, a lens. The light goes through that lens. It hits the retina at the back of the eye. We can't really see that because it's just a layer of thin cells back there. But the retina would turn the light into electricity and kind of zap it off to the fish's brain through that optic nerve. And I don't remember, I think there's our optic nerve. You can just see a little piece of it hanging down. The other end of that optic nerve, remember what would it be connected to? Be connected to the brain of the fish. So that's all the parts of the eyes, pretty complicated, but really cool if you think about how this fish's eye works exactly the same way really that your eye works. So next time, come back, we'll do some more internal anatomy on our fish and go even a little bit further. See you then. Day five of our fish dissection. This is kind of the beginning of the grand finale. This is where it really gets good. So we've studied the ears and the eyes and the gills and the fins. Um, now it's time to really get into the internal organs on this fish. And there's a lot to see. So let's get going. When we open up the body cavity on our perch to find all the internal organs, we're going to start back here at the vent. We're going to slide our scissors right in the vent and start cutting. And right now we're just cutting through skin, so it's pretty easy. As soon as we get up to where these uh, pelvic fins are, there's a layer of bone there, and it's going to get hard. We're going to have to kind of crunch our way through that bone and we are going to keep cutting all the way up between the gills of the fish see what we can find. So now we've got the only cut made we're going to pry things open and we will look initially at the internal organs inside of the fish. First thing we see right on top we're going to move out of the way is this tube that runs from the digestive system of the fish in front back here to the vent that is the large intestine that's the end of the digestive tract um, when the food is all used up in the fish, it passes out of the body as fish poop right out the vent. So we're just going to cut that off so we can work our way around this. Because the next thing we're going to look for underneath here, see this big uh, kind of purple orangish lump? This tells us right away we know this perch was a female and these are her eggs. So we can get those eggs out of there if we grab the eggs. It'll give us a lot more room to work with. All that really holds them in place are a few little arteries and veins. We can take those eggs out in one clump. And we're not going to count them now, but I would guess, if we look closely at here, there might be three or four or five thousand eggs. They're tiny, they're very small, um, but lots of them. And a perch might lay, a perch this size might lay 
5,000 eggs every single year. So we will set those eggs aside in one big egg mass over there, and we will move our attention up a little bit closer to the front of the perch. And I need to open this up a little bit more, because way up here between the gills, not the easiest thing to see, but this little red lump up here, shaped almost like a little uh, triangle, is the fish's heart. So the heart is way up here. There's a chamber on top, chamber on the bottom. If we grab this by the top, by the arteries and veins that come into the top of the heart, if we're careful, we should be able to just take that heart, split a little bit, but that is our perch's heart right there. So these are the arteries and veins. Here's the heart. We will set the fish's heart off to the side. And we're going to keep going. So now some of the organs are out. There's still a few things left in here. The important stuff, um, the digestive system, the way the food works through the fish. Covering all of the digestive system is this big pink organ. That's the liver. And the liver produces fluids. They're called enzymes. And they help the fish digest its food when it is down here into the fish's stomach, which is kind of hidden underneath all of this down here. Here's our fish's stomach. We have to kind of pick our way through all these. It's a muscular organ. To actually get food into the stomach starts up here in the mouth and there's a tube called the esophagus. And if I slide my tweezers down there, hard to control all this, but if I slide the tweezers down, it'll go right down the fish's esophagus, all the way down, way down here into the bottom. And out here is the fish's stomach and there's the end of my tweezers. So that's the fish's stomach, which is covered by the liver. The food starts digesting when it's in the stomach, passes through the stomach into the intestines, which is this whole mass right here, through the small intestines first. Um, that's where the nutrients from the food is absorbed into the fish's body. And then whatever waste, like we said, the fish poop, travels down the large intestine and leaves right here through the fish's vent. If we move this out of the way, actually we're just gonna cut all of these organs out. It's a nice clear view inside of the fish. There are some neat things to go inside of here. We'll get rid of some of the blood from the fish, some of the liquid that's in there. And you see this shiny uh, layer of, almost looks like skin. It's, it's a membrane inside of the fish. And what that's called is the fish's air bladder. And what would you guess happens to be inside of an air bladder. What do you think it's full of? Air, right? Makes sense. Why would a fish want air inside of its body? What does air do in the water? It floats. So the air bladder, if we pop through this, is just a hollow tube. It kind of deflates right now. You can see it's a hollow tube inside of there that was full of air, and that helps the fish float in the water. Without an air bladder, fish would just sink right down to the bottom like a big rock. If you can look underneath the air bladder, there is a little red line that runs right along the backbone of the fish. The solid red line, and that's something that a fish has that's much different from a human. This red line is the fish's kidney. So if you know about humans or mammals, we have two kidneys. They're small and they're round, about the size of your fist. We can take kidneys out of people. They're easy to grab onto in there. Um, in a fish, this long, flat kidney is not easy to get out. We can't take it out. We can't show you. So you just have to look at it right here. And as I run my finger along this fish's kidney, the kidney's in there to filter out. It filters the blood of the fish, um, takes the waste out, and produces uh, the waste from the blood. is called urine. That also drains out of the fish through its vent. But as I'm running my finger along the kidney, I am feeling all kinds of bones in there, the spine, the ribs, all of those are inside of the fish. They're not easy to see, but here's the disadvantage to doing a dissection this way. They're easy for me to feel, but you can't feel them, but they're there. All of the white material on the inside of the fish is muscle. So the fish's whole body then would be covered with muscle right underneath the skin inside of the abdominal cavity here. That's what moves the fish. The muscle is also the part that we're gonna eat when we eat fish. We're not gonna eat this one, but if you like to eat fish, um, what you're actually eating there is the muscle. So again, we got bones, we have muscles, we have kidneys, we have air bladders, stomachs, intestines, all kinds of neat stuff inside of the fish. It's a lot to look at in one short little segment, but we did it, and now all that's left is to look for the brain inside of the fish. So that will be our last task, our last thing to do with this fish, 
and we will see you next time when we find the fish's brain. It's time to wrap up our fish dissection. We've done a lot. We've seen a lot so far. We've looked at a lot of anatomy. Remember, anatomy means the body parts of the fish. And since we're studying fish, what do we call it? We call it ichthyology. So we've done anatomy, we've done ichthyology, uh, we've looked at a lot of parts. Still though, we have not covered anywhere near everything there is to see, both on the inside or the outside of that fish. But if you thought doing a dissection was cool, maybe you have what it takes to become an ichthyologist someday. Or maybe you think it would just be neat to be a veterinarian, or a nurse, or an eye surgeon. We worked on eyes. Maybe you want to be an eye surgeon. All those are awesome jobs, and they all use the same types of science that we used when we dissected our fish. Now though, before we're done, our final job is gonna to be to try and locate the brain inside of this perch. Brains are delicate, right? They need lots of protection. Same reason why we wear a helmet when we play football or ride our bike, we need to protect our brain. And what do you think surrounds the brain of the fish or you to protect it? It's a hard bone, it's called the skull, and we've gotta get through the skull and find the fish's brain, so let's get going. So to find the brain in our perch, we wanna kinda of figure out where that brain would be to begin with, and if we find the eye, the brain's right up here in the top of its head, back behind the eye. The problem with doing this, though, we have to get the skull apart, it's a hard bone, but we have to be really careful. If we hit that brain with our tweezers or our scissors, it's gonna to turn to mush, and there's gonna be nothing for us to see. So very carefully, we're gonna make a couple of cuts. We're gonna start, we're gonna go from one eye to the other on the perch, just right down its skull. We'll cut through the skull there, and then we have to turn and cut right up the fish's skull without cutting too deeply. The brain's inside of there. We do not wanna to touch it with our scissors. So we've got two cuts. We made a cut this way, we make a cut this way. And somewhere hidden underneath there, the brain is down inside. It doesn't want to just pop right open and show us our brain, so this is our chance. It's going to take some work. It's going to take some strong thumbs. We have to try and wedge our thumbs into that first cut that we made and see if we can pry that apart. Pry apart the other side. And if we do that successfully and pry away a little bit of the bone and the muscle that's in there, we may get lucky and be able to see our fish's brain. It's pretty well hidden in, in this fish. We'll get through there, clean off some of that. The brain is right underneath. It's kind of a light pink colored. We'll get rid of some of the fluid and the liquid, and the brain is right down inside of here. This light pink right there is all of the fish's brain. And it's not really made of muscle uh, like the other tissue, so we can just grab it like we did the heart and just yank it right out of there. But we may, we can give it a try. At the front of the brain are gonna be the optic nerves and at the back, it's gonna run into the fish's spine. This one's getting pretty soft, but we're starting to lift it. That whole pink thing underneath the end of the tweezers is the fish's brain. So here's one more fish that we, uh, we got the brain. This one shows up a little bit better. You can see the lobes are the three parts of the brain, three parts of this one. The optic nerve is this little white line right here that's attached to the back of the fish's eye. That shows up pretty nicely. But again, you can see just how small that brain is and where it is right behind the fish's eyes. I wonder why it's so hard for me to catch a fish when they have such a small brain. Well, anyway, what did you think of our perch dissection? It's a great way to learn some science things like the words anatomy, ichthyology, and really it makes me appreciate how complex and really neat all of these body parts inside of a fish like a perch really are. In fact, it kind of makes me want to just get outside and go fishing myself, so that's where I'm going. Thanks for watching our fish dissection.